Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. It's my joy to be here, first and foremost. I want to thank the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for this opportunity. And then I also want to thank our Father in the Lord and our Mother in the Lord, Pastor E. Adeboe. Thank you so much for coming for the honor of being here. I also want to thank the leadership of the youth ministry and the organizers of this International Youth Conference. Thank you for this opportunity in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, now, I want to make a request. I want to make a request. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. And there are two requests I want to make. Number one, I want you to gloriously just go back to your seat. And then when, when it is time, I will give you room to come. Please do that so that we can have some time. May God bless you. The way you are walking back to your seat, that is how you walk into your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to pray for five minutes before I teach. Is that all right if we pray? How many of you love prayer? So let me have your attention for the next five minutes thereabout. I want us to spend some time praying in the spirit. This is a conference that I believe with all my heart was so designed by God to maximally prepare, equip, and empower us even to shine forth. And so for the next five minutes, I'd like you to give your destiny a dedicated attention, minimize looking around. We're going to pray. But to do that, we're going to shout the name Jesus three times. And after the third shout, we're going to begin to pray in the spirit because that is a name that is above every other name that is a name that is able to save a man that is a name that is able to lift a man that is a name that is able to empower a man are you ready now when I count you shout Jesus one number two Number three. Now open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere. Someone pray. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are Shada bereke te praska da balanda prataska ti varatus kali prende ke bereku siata. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Shale ke paruska te prende ke bereku shala kata prataska da balanda ba. Shabranda ka barata ka praska te bereke te praska te balatus siata. Embra kata praska te bereke te praska te balakosha da balanda ba. Shade breke te balatos kate brasko te balatos yata. Hallelujah. Say after me loud and clear. Say, Father, tonight, let your light come upon my destiny. Tonight, let your light. Come upon my destiny. Go ahead and pray. 
let your light drive away every darkness let your light take away every confusion in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we are still praying say father in the name of Jesus I ask for a supply of the spirit of revelation let it fall upon me right now go ahead and pray open your mouth and pray the supply of the spirit of revelation stand upon the grace that is on our father in the Lord and upon that grace let me prophesy to someone already that in the name of, that is above all names after this conference the Lord will you will release you like a trophy to your world after this conference the Lord will release you like a trophy to your world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ For someone else, they have said about you like they said about Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Let me prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who is the lifter of men. May he lift you and make you to be a wonder to your world. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And for someone here, maybe you have experienced a level of lifting, you have experienced a level of advancement, but we measure a thousand cubits for you and we push you deeper into the realm of impact. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, please, may I request that for the next few minutes, please lend me and lend your destiny dedicated attention. Because I believe that what you are about to hear will define the next season of your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus, please be gloriously seated and may the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Two verses and then I'll begin to teach. The first verse I want us to consider is 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 
the book of first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 the bible says but ye are a chosen generation say amen, amen. you are a royal priesthood and holy nation and a peculiar people the bible says that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light scripture number two matthew chapter 5 please we'll read from verse 13 down to 16. matthew chapter 5 this was jesus teaching the disciples and all who were present at the time of this teaching and he was teaching them what we call theologically the beatitudes matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 he said ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted he says it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men 14 we're reading to 16 verse 14 now it says ye are the light of the world say i am the light of the world <laughs> prophesy it with conviction i am the light of the world the bible says you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden 15 it says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but upon a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house i love verse 16. verse 16 is an instruction and in it's an admonition it says let your light so shine before men the word let is the same word permit permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven may the lord help us tonight in jesus name isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 is a very interesting verse prophet isaiah wrote by the spirit 60 and verse 1 and here's what it says arise shine two very profound instructions instruction number one arise instruction number two shine that means it is impossible to shine except and unless you arise listen very carefully it gives you the instruction then it now tells you the basis for the possibility of honoring that instruction it says arise shine why it says for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i would always like to quote this scripture from amplified the amplified rendition is very interesting here's what it says it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you hallelujah it says for your light is come and the glory of the lord is brilliance is risen upon you now the word arise is a word that is connected to responsibility the word arise immediately tells you that there is a part you have to play in standing up upon your feet when you meet someone who is seated on the floor and you tell the person arise even if you help the man to rise up there has to be an effort a participation on the part of that individual if he intends to leave the floor and to stand up on his feet are we together you need to understand that in this kingdom the realities and the possibilities and the results that we command in this kingdom is not entirely up to god and it is not entirely up to you listen carefully god designed this kingdom to function in a way and a manner that it will always take god almighty in partnership with a willing and obedient man 
for anything to happen in my life and your life it is important that we take note of this any Christianity that makes the outcome of your life absolutely dependent on God with no particip participatory contribution on your own part is not a responsible faith practice so whatever will happen in my life and your life will number one depend on God the sovereign factor the ultimate factor but it will also depend on a willing and obedient heart did the Bible not say if ye be willing and obedient it says you will eat the good of the land not if ye be around when the words are spoken if you are willing to participate with God and if you are obedient to walk in keeping with the demands that the instructions place on you it leaves you with an assurance that you will eat the good of the land are we together now many people have not come into a proper understanding of how the kingdom was designed and how it operates so you will find out that there are when, many well-intentioned believers who are never able to live an impactful life, who are never able to do much for God. And the simple reason is because they do not understand that there is a role that they have to play in actualizing destiny. There is a role that they have to play in manifesting prophecy if it must happen in your life and my life whether it be impact whether it be a glorious life whether it be a colorful destiny it will always be a partnership between the god of heaven and a willing and obedient heart hallelujah the second information i want to communicate very quickly is that excelling in this kingdom at any level is knowledge dependent please write it down any kind of excellence and any kind of results in this kingdom is knowledge dependent someone shout knowledge one more time say it with conviction say knowledge that means this is a kingdom where your degree and the extent of your exploit your showing forth it does not just depend on the might of God alone. It does not just depend on the love of God for you alone. It does not just depend on the wisdom of God alone. It depends on your having the requisite level of knowledge and understanding. Let me give you two or three scriptures very quickly. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. It's a very popular scripture. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. I'll quote it for the sake of time. It says, my people, the first two words, my people, although they are my people, the Bible says they are destroyed, not because of the extent of the strength of the devil, not because of the extent of the limitations in their lives, as far as their background is concerned. They are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. We can go back to KJV my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge he said because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou be no priest unto me the second scripture to buttress on this is found in ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. ephesians 4 and verse 18. so i've, I've said two things that possibilities and results in this life depend on the partnership between the god of heaven and then a willing and obedient heart we are celebrating the mighty things that god himself has done and continues to do in rccg and in the life of our father today because there is an almighty god the almighty god but then there is a willing and obedient heart that's what is responsible for the results that we now enjoy and then that excelling and results in this kingdom is a product of knowledge Ephesians 4 and verse 18 please it says having the understanding darkened being 
alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. That means in as much as it is true that through the death, the burial, the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that on account of what we know and call to be the finished work of Christ, there are possibilities that the Bible calls blessings in spiritual, in, in the heavens that have been made for us. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But walking in the reality and the experience of these riches, that includes the potential and the prophetic uh, destiny that shows forth a prophetic destiny of impact it is impossible to walk in that reality until and unless you have knowledge the purpose of this conference among many other things God has put together great vessels to speak to you the purpose is to be able to bring you to a level of spiritual enlightenment so that you will have the requisite level of knowledge that it takes to activate this prophecy of showing forth. I submit to you sincerely that if you are bankrupt of knowledge, this will only be a cliche and it will only excite you emotionally, but you may sadly never be able to walk in the experience of it because this kingdom is knowledge dependent and talking about knowledge let me state here that every dimension of result in the kingdom has a requisite level of knowledge that you must rise to to activate that operation in your life that means just having random knowledge or casual knowledge or low level knowledge is not sufficient enough to bring you the results you desire this kingdom demands high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination i want you for instance just look around anywhere you see light in this beautiful um this 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 beautiful um, uh, place here look at this light and look at the light all over do you know that the reason we are able to see ourselves and the reason i am able to preach comfortably is because the light that is here is high enough to drive every darkness is that true if all the lights in this place this campground were suddenly put off I hope you know that the phone the device that you have has a little touch light also is that true but the light there is not enough to swallow up the darkness but it is still light so if you put on your touch light and all the lights here went off listen carefully it will be light enough for us to identify you are there but not enough for us to know who is there and the details of the information Are we together there are many of you the light that you have is just enough for us to know you are in the world but not enough for us to know what God has put inside you because the light is too small to make any reasonable impact but someone's story is changing in the name of Jesus now look up please isn't it interesting that whether you are watching from Lagos, whether you are watching from America, whether you are watching from Nigeria, whether you are watching from Europe, the moment it is day, when everybody looks up, we all see the sun. Is that true? We see the sun not just because of the fact that it is high up there. The size of the lights that, and, and, and you know, the size of the sun compels everyone on earth 7.6 billion people and counting when you look up you see the sun it's impossible to confuse the sun for an aircraft it is impossible to confuse the sun for his, for maybe a little uh, um, uh, what do you call it a spaceship or something when you see the sun it is bright and large and unique enough 
from today I prophesy unto you the same way everyone can see the Sun that is the same way they will see the hand of God upon your life hear me I submit to you that it is not where you are that is a disadvantage is that the light is not bright enough are we together when your light is bright enough it can compel men from everywhere to come and see the goodness and the mercy of God in your life now look up please I have told you that knowledge is very important and that your knowledge must be at a high level the higher your knowledge the higher your impact the higher the level of light that you have in your life and destiny the more unquestionable your results and your impact is concerned the people who are manning your video cameras here they are not manning it based on ignorance you may be anointed but if you stand behind this camera and you do not have sufficient knowledge you are only going to be wasting your time around it is that true the bible says the labor of the fool weary at every one of them the fool there not being an insult it's a description there is, the absence of light can turn an individual to look like a fool it says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them because he knoweth not how to get to the city light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see it's my prayer lord you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see so here I am to worship, here I am to bow, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Watch this. Do you know the Bible tells us that from age 12, this is Jesus. Remember, the Bible tells us to look unto Jesus and it calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. At age 12, Jesus was found in the temple, even though he was the word incarnate, even though he was the word of God, he still found himself in the temple, learning and building capacity. By the time we get to Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says after his baptism, he was driven of the spirit into the wilderness. When Satan came to tempt him after praying and fasting for 40 days, Jesus looked at Satan and he did not say, I think. He did not say, maybe. He did not say, I'm not really sure. He said, it is written. A product of knowledge. When he met with the scribes and Pharisees, he began to teach them, is it not said in your law, this and that and that, but this is what I say. Knowledge is powerful. But very quickly, for the sake of our discussion tonight, there are three areas of knowledge that you must have in order to rise, in order to shine forth. There are three areas. Please never forget these areas for the rest of your life. There are three areas. I call them three levels of knowledge, if you want to put it in another way. There are three levels of knowledge that every man on earth who desires to make impact for Jesus, every man on earth who desires to be used mightily by God to do much for the kingdom, 
and let me tell you it is God's desire for every one of us seated here and those following online or following by way of television everyone has a destiny in Christ and if you know what God has in store for you you will not spare to give your all and your best to live a meaningful and an impactful life say amen so there are three levels of knowledge that you must have are you ready now I'll give it to you quickly and then we'll pray number one the first level of knowledge that is responsible for shining forth responsible for a life of impact is that you must know God that is the first level of knowledge the knowledge of God you must know God no matter what else you know if you do not know the God of the Bible forget about impact by God's definition if it is true that impact and shining or showing forth is dependent on knowledge then I tell you that the first kind and the first level of knowledge that you need is the knowledge of God Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 Daniel 11 and verse 32 the B part let me quote it very quickly for sake of time here's what the Bible says but the people but RCCG youths that do know their God he said they shall be strong and they shall do exploits now listen carefully do you notice that that scripture never said but the people that do know God the people that do know their God two things will come into their life and will be expressed in their life number one is strength capacity stamina to survive all of the vicissitudes of life and then number two it leaves you with an assurance that they shall do exploits the people that do know their God in John 17 and verse 3 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven to pray and in his praying this is what he said this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent when you know God you will be able to stand and face the challenges of life with confidence and with dignity most believers want to explore destiny and the faith life and they do not pay attention to knowing God cultivating an experiential and a functional relationship with the God of the Bible listen to me this is more than just being born again this is a deeper experience being born again is the first and most important but not the only there is a deeper level it says my little children of whom I travel until Christ be formed in you there is the stamina and the confidence that happens to you when you know God when David stood before Goliath it was not just the strength of his sling that gave him confidence he said you come to me with your bows and your spheres but I come to you in the name of the Lord God whom you have defied do you know God can you say I know him let me give you one other scripture we're still talking of knowing God in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 Ephesians chapter 1 we're reading 15 to 19 please write it down very important scripture Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus and he said wherefore I also after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints 16 he said I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers what was the prayer request that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him in the knowledge of him 
verse 18 the eyes of your understanding he says verse 18 being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints the last verse now 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power when you know God then you know his power then you know his love then you know his integrity then you know his consistency there are things you can never believe until you know God now watch this a few of you here I presume by the privilege of God's grace know me here and if someone suddenly comes up here and tells you I am Joshua Selman because you know me you would look at the person and say no 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 this is not the person we know is that true yes. when you know God you know what he can do and you know what he cannot do how can I call on your name and end up in shame no way that's the God that we serve how can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. Because you are my God. Someone prophesied upon your destiny. You are my God. to me the basis of our confidence in this kingdom is not in anything physical your life is already at a risk if your confidence is based on money if your confidence is just on your qualification as important as these things are the believers confidence it says I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded it is based on the knowledge of God that you can dare the devil you can dare destiny I may come from a background where nobody has known about me you may not know me but the God that I know will force you to know me the God of heaven when you know God then you will know that God is love when you know God you will know that God is all-powerful it says once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the Lord so when God sends you to go to a place where there is no physical connection you will not be afraid because you know the one who backs you it says yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil why for thou art with me They looked unto him and he said their faces were lightened. You are my God. Now listen very carefully. I know that there are people here who come from all kinds of backgrounds. There are some of you if you depend on your physical background. Respectfully speaking there may not be any leverage there as far as an enviable destiny is concerned. Let me bring you a word of hope. Ah, this God bar, listen. I will worship him forever, love him forever because this God is too good. I will worship him forever. The one who can pick him an ordinary person no background doesn't matter Nathaniel said can anything good come out of Nazareth ah look this God I am telling you he can pick you from wherever it does not matter what kind of family you came from I'm speaking to you if you invest in the knowledge of God 
then you have made an investment towards a destiny of impact a life that indeed will shine forth listen to me we live in a world today where people boast of all the things that they have and for someone here you may not have the privilege to boast of a very very exceptional or wealthy family you may not even have the privilege of boasting in terms of exceptional education or all of these things but when you come to this god you see among the many things that he gives you is his life do you know what it means to receive the life of god this life that i have is the life of God. This life that I have hey. is the life. Professor, one more time. This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life. One more time, Professor. This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life of Christ. This life that I have. life of God in me this life the first level of knowledge if you want to live an incredible life let me tell you the truth when you give your life to Jesus you cease being an ordinary person this is not a preacher's suggestion it is the integrity of God's Word For God so loved the world, the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have. Knowing God has an implication of having, such as I have, he said. Number two, very quickly, is God speaking to someone? The second level of knowledge that you need, the first being... The knowledge of God the second level of knowledge you must have in order to be able to shine forth is that you must know yourself knowing God is powerful as far as your fellowship as far as your rising as far as your communion and your spiritual orientation is concerned but in addition to knowing God you must know yourself Oh, you must know yourself. Psalm 49 and verse 20. Write this scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life. Psalm 49 and verse 20. You must know yourself. Psalm 49 and verse 20. Here's what the Bible says. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perisheth. It's important to know God because in the revelation of God is the revelation of yourself. You may know yourself in terms of your background. You may know yourself in terms of your tribe. You may know yourself in terms of your earthly family. But it is important that you understand your spiritual identity. And I want to show you from the word of God two things that the Bible says about you. Number one, John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7. Please give it to us quickly. John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7. You must know who you are. There was a man sent from God whose name was Joshua Selman. There was a man. 
Look at the origin. Someone prophesied, say, sent from God. Say it about yourself, sent from God. I know that you may call yourself a Yoruba person, an Igbo person, a Hausa person, an European, uh, you know, a, 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 an African. All of those things are just the physical geography. But the Bible traces your origin. It never said there was a man who came from his mother or came from his father. The Bible did not even say there was a man who came from God. You did not come, you were sent. That means God is not scratching his head wondering what you will do with your life. There was a space allocated for you, sent from God. Sent from God. When you arrived the earth, they gave you all kinds of names. They called you Joseph, they called you Abiodu. They called you whatever they, your, is your name. But let me tell you the truth. You must understand that you came from God. And the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. Listen, this is a mentality that changed my life. That means there is an advantage I have beyond my background. There is an advantage I have beyond the geographic reference you may associate me with. We live in a world today where one of the biggest problems of young people is identity crisis. The inability to have a scripture based understanding of who you are. Unfortunately, we live in a world today that prides in suggesting all kinds of things. If you do not know who you are, the world has a plethora of templates that they will make you pick anyone from. There are people who have become weak because the world told them they were weak. There are people who have become mediocre because the world told them that. Remember when the spies, the 12 spies returned back some of them brought an evil report and they said we were in our own eyes like grasshoppers he never said we were in the eyes of satan he never said we were in the eyes of god like grasshopper based on our own perception this is our conclusion that we we're like grasshoppers and caleb stilled them and said let us go up at once for we are able that's why i raised that song it's not just a song that you should sing just casually it's a revelation you must know who you are you must know who you are the world that we live in will bully you look up please the world that we live in will bully you many of us you go to high institutions of learning and you will see all these people carry you know different forms of living and they can bully and intimidate you many times they make you feel stupid for being responsible many times they make you feel out of place for being godly and on fire they try to downplay your 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 fire for god they try to downplay your spirituality and they make it look like you have to choose whether to be spiritual or to be technological no many of you looking at me now have given up your spirituality because you want to give a context that you are modern or contemporary no sir i remind you this life that you have is a life of god in you this life that you have is the life of God. This grace that you have is the grace of God in you. This grace that you have is the grace of God. Listen, this light that you have is the light of God in you light that you have is a light of God when you are full of yourself listen 
or when you are full of the light of God I should say it produces a healthy confidence not pride not pride but you know who you are when someone comes to look at you and say young lady the way you are looking you are looking as if you are not in our world and our generation you can appreciate them for their perspective sincerely but then stand true and stand confident over what you know God has made you you see that our generation is bankrupt of conviction we can become anything depending on who is talking no there are many of you God is raising you to be the next apostles and prophets and evangelists but right now you are about to give it give up that noble call because of some ill-informed respectfully speaking arrogant people who are in ignorance who want to downplay your passion and your fire for God some of you will be the next politicians some of you will be the next heads of government and while you are walking in the path of discipline and responsibility that leads to this kind of enviable destiny there are ignorant people who cannot do much in your life but will downplay your passion and commitment I remind you this life that you have is the life of God in you this life that you have is a life of God listen the next time anybody wants to bully you out of your conviction out of your identity you don't need to fight don't waste your time trying to defend yourself the Bible says haven't done all to stand stand you don't have to fight and quarrel and insult people no 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 if someone looks at you and feels you are stupid no problem did they not think Joseph was a fool but later on when he became prime minister there are some of you those who are laughing at you now one day they will open the door of an office to seek for help and guess who will be seated there and the same tongues you were praying while they laughed you will still be praying it in the office the same bible they laughed at you for holding will still be on your desk there while you are ceo i won't go back can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me i won't go back can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me please hear me by this admonition god is already speaking to someone you have already come too far the world is making you look like you are wrong receive the grace to continue receive the grace to continue many may be making you look like a fool for being a prayerful person receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for being a disciplined young man or disciplined young woman receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for loving the word of god and being a student of scripture receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for turning down supposedly nice opportunities to honor your convictions i assure you at the end of it god will compensate you hear me there are some of you right now you are about to lose your identity simply because of friends apostle i'm tired of being alone can i tell you there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother it is better to walk alone and be in the right direction than to walk with a crowd heading nowhere did you hear what i said it is better to walk alone and be headed the direction of destiny than to walk with a crowd that is bankrupt of vision and going nowhere please sit down as we wrap up
number one the first level of knowledge you must know God number two you must know yourself you must have a spiritual orientation about who you are now that you are in Christ I'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor so I know who I am number three please write what is the third level of knowledge you must have to live an excelling life that shines forth are you ready you must know your place in God's program and in destiny these are the three levels of knowledge you must know your place in God's program you must know your place in destiny so number one you must know God number two you must know yourself in light of the knowledge of God that you now have but number three which is equally important you must know your place in God's program you must know your place there are many many people who know God to an extent there are even few who have had a healthy understanding of who they are but many have not found their place in destiny in Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 here's what the Bible says 16 and 17 very instructive scripture as we prepare to pray the Bible says and as he came he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up the Bible says and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read verse 17 very powerful scripture verse 17 Luke 4 17 the Bible says and there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah's and when he had opened the book hallelujah he found the place where it was written when he opened the book he found from the book the place where it was written the Spirit of the Lord is upon me when you read from verse 18 he found it and when he read it he now closed the book the eyes fastened upon him and he said this scripture is fulfilled that means I have found my place let me tell you the truth it is risky to sojourn this earth in confusion as to your place in life and destiny and in God's program we are celebrating our father in the Lord today and our mother we are celebrating the mighty things that God has done and continues to do across the globe through the RCCG simply because a man found his place it is powerful when you find your place because when you find your place in God's program you have found security when you find your place in God's program you have found the basis of your confidence it is dangerous to assume your place you must find it you can't just assume this is my place uh -uh. let me announce to you by the authority of Scripture that there is an allocation for everyone in God's prophetic pro program there is nobody here under the sound of my voice and for those watching by television there is no one upon the earth who does not have a place in God's prophetic program but you see let me tell you the truth your place cannot be left vacant forever if you refuse to occupy your place God is able to give your bishopric to another person that is why someone can begin a ministry as an evangelist and later up end up carrying other responsibilities the added responsibility was given to him through faithfulness because of someone else's assignment that he refused to do it's in your Bible he said his bishopric let another take oh may no one replace you in destiny 
may no one replace you in destiny hallelujah do you know why finding your place in destiny is very important because destiny is like a relay how many of you have um, seen those in the track and field running and when there are four people running a relay when one person starts all the other three are at the mercy of that one person is that true they are ready they are willing you even see some of them jogging but if the person to come is slow and is wasting their time he can delay the destiny of all the rest how many people's destinies have been delayed now because you have not found your place imagine if mary did not find her place imagine if joseph did not find his place imagine if jesus did not find his place imagine if abraham did not find his place esther paul who wrote two-thirds of the new testament he said lo i come let's 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 read that that, that chapter hebrews 10 and verse 7 lo i come 10 7 hebrews lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will when i found out that by the privilege of god's grace that i have a place in god's program i have a place in the revival that is happening i have a place in steering my generation to love and know god when i found that place i was happy and this is what i do all my life this is why i live and if it pleases him this is why i would transit to see his face all my days on earth i will await the moment that i see you face to face for nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the cup that will run dry listen hear me you are seated here today and you are getting blessed your being blessed is a result of someone finding his place in life and destiny you must find your place you want to show forth there is an allocation for you there are some of you a few years from now you are the ones who will be standing here and you are going to be preaching to others and you will tell them many years ago i was seated there there are some of you you will travel from nation to nation carrying the gospel and the power of god with signs and wonders betting revivals across territories hear me there are some of you you are the ones who will become the billionaires and be supplying resources for the kingdom activities there are some of you you are the political leaders that will be enacting policies that make the territory safe for the gospel and safe for advancement and safe for development there are some of you you are the educators who will be training the next level of leaders please hear me by all means find your place by all means find your place it is a risk to not find your place listen carefully roaming around and wasting your time in unreasonable activities unreasonable relationships unreasonable distractions is only eating up your destiny i hope you know the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you are giving a part of your life to hallelujah i want you to listen very carefully to this song i'm, I'm about to sing and then we'll pray whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whatever you want to do lord you can do through me whoever you want to 
bless Lord you can bless through me whoever you want to change Lord you can change through me and here's the reason I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Lord Jesus I'm yours forevermore listen whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift through me whatever you want to start Lord you can start through me and whatever you want to end Lord you can end is that someone's prayer I'm your Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore now hear me whoever you want to heal Lord you can heal you want to change Lord you can change you me that is what it means to find your place in destiny Lord if there is someone who needs healing Joshua Selman is available Lord if there is someone who needs to know Jesus Joshua Selman is available Lord if there is a nation that needs revival and that the fire of God falls upon it Joshua Selman is available do you need me to give you a prayer request or are you already praying you must find your place in destiny you must find your place in destiny listen please listen to me listen to me I want you to make a covenant with your destiny tonight that visionless living comes to an end make a covenant with your destiny that anything that wastes my time tonight is the night I wrap it up I don't have time for distractions time for waste there are millions depending upon your destiny here's what the Bible says it said seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame someone open your mouth and begin to pray father I obtain grace grace to invest in the knowledge of God grace to invest in knowing myself grace to invest in finding my place in your prophetic program for the nation someone pray a man of God who is rising pray a businessman who is rising pray a student who is rising pray a visionary who is rising, pray. Hallelujah. Now listen very carefully. Listen. I want you to pray and say, Father, the same way you walked with our Father, and guided him to become what he has become today guide me also guide me by your spirit lift your voice and pray guide me also by step by season guide me also 
per moment, per decision. Guide me also. You guided our fathers. Lord, guide me. Pray. Guide my generation. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen very carefully. Please listen. I'm wrapping up. Now, I want you to listen. Hear me. As we celebrate the revival that is hitting this nation, the continent of Africa, our fathers have prophesied this revival that before Jesus returns, there will be a massive awakening an awakening like we have never seen before and we are already seeing this move of the spirit across the nations of Africa and believe me from Africa we are exporting this revival exporting it to the nations of the earth revealing Jesus in a dimension that has not been seen and experienced before but please hear me please hear me before Jesus returns the army that God is going to be using Will be separated into three categories i need to say this and then i wrap up number one the first formation of this end time army that will usher in the last move of god before the return of jesus the first dimension of this army are called prophetic intercessors there are men and women who like anna the prophetess they are people who will master the ministry of priesthood and the mysteries of the altar. There cannot be revival and the genuine move of God until there are a people who give themselves continually to prayer. Not just me giving prayer. God give me this tea and bread. Prayer for nations. Prayer for territories prophetic intercessors and I know that some of you here that grace and that mantle has been looking for you prophetic intercessors watchmen that are placed upon the wall that will give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem to be a praise people who will pray down fire upon nations pray down fire upon generations number two the second category of people are those that the Bible will call the sent ones. These are the ones who will be sent everywhere across what you know to be the seven mountains. Pastors, business people, politicians, educators, family people, career people. They may be serving across the territory, but they are people of conviction who love the Lord. Number three, the third category of people that form this end time army are called the kingdom financiers. They are the ones anointed by God with grace in the marketplace to make sure that the program of God is not delayed because of financial limitations. These are people who will be trusted with wealth. It will not just be wealth from business. God himself will make them his treasurers and they will fund his program across nations. Hear me? Everyone listening to me right now by television or in this place, you can be one or two or all of these categories. That is what gives you the basis to shine forth. The Bible says that they may show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light my time is up but i want to do two things two things now very quickly number one i'm going to pray for you and something will come upon you this night in the name of jesus the son of the living god but before i pray for you please hear me some of you are crying. I know that there are people here who are saying, Apostle, 
honestly I came for this conference but sincerely I've not made my my life right with Jesus I cannot say for sure that I am saved for others you may be saying well I have come out for several altar calls but I just came out to satisfy that emotional impulse I never really meant it now please hear me I don't want you to just rush out emotionally think and be very serious but like our father would do I'm going to count one to five I'm not saying you need impartation impartation will be later on but those who are saying sincerely I know I cannot even talk about shining forth because I failed in the first level of knowledge I do not know Jesus I do not know the God of the Bible I have heard about him I have gone to church I have read books about him but I do not have that encounter with him as I count one to five I like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand right in front here one when I count five I begin to pray two make sure you mean it with Jesus three win that war tonight make it right with Jesus he said ye must be born again shepherd of my soul I give you full control wherever you hallelujah now please hear me please look up I'm about to pray for you but I need to tell you something you know there are many people who come out for altar calls like this and they don't really mean what they are saying they just come out because they feel like they should come out no it must be an experience when you come out it means that number one you have acknowledged the need for Jesus in your life you have acknowledged that you cannot help yourself by the strength of the flesh number two when you come out it is that you are ready to surrender everything to him you're my treasure my priority who can compare with you for great is the man your hands for all of you who are here and maybe there's someone who is watching by television you're watching by way of the television station or the internet maybe here in Nigeria maybe in America maybe in UK or you are even watching by way of a rebroadcast I want you to know that Jesus is able to give you a new beginning right now the Bible says whosoever comes to him he will in no wise cast away this is the God of the Bible all of you who are in front I want you to say this after me say it loud and clear you are not reciting a poem let it be from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I need you in my life I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin of Satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever 
I declare that I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I am a recipient of eternal life amen congratulations to you now let me pray for you father I thank you for these ones you have brought them out by your spirit according to the authority of scripture I declare their sins forgiven and in the name of Jesus Christ I call them bona fide recipients of the life of God according to the integrity of God's word and your declaration I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight and forever you are for Jesus you belong to him and you will live for him forever in Jesus name we pray now all of you I want to here's what I want you to do please you would there are counselors waving the placard by my right which is your left I want all of you to decently just follow them there'll be a group of people who have a word with you they may require details from you please do well to cooperate with them just within a minute or two and then you'll be back to your seat let's bless the Lord for them as they go Is that the best you can do? Thank you, Jesus, for a massive harvest. Hallelujah. Now, for sake of time, let me speak over your life. We have another session, and um, let me encourage you to participate in all the sessions right up until your conference is over because every session has been designed by God to bless you and let me lend um, my voice to that of the organizers to encourage all those who are watching by way of television discipline yourself and participate in all of the sessions right till the last because every man woman of God who will be speaking here in in teaching of the word in worship or in whatever capacity it is designed to bless you and I know in the name of Jesus Christ that as you pay attention the Lord himself will cause you to shine forth in Jesus name lift your hands and receive the blessing for tonight in the name that is above all names I decree and declare standing upon the grace of our father and upon every the grace that is upon every servant of the Lord in this place I decree and declare everything that has kept you down so that you will not shine forth we clear it out of the way right now we clear it out of the way right now we clear it out of the way right now I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine every gift of God that is dormant within you and has not been released to bless your world I decree and declare that between now and the end of this conference may it find visibility to bless the world in the mighty name of Jesus I place a demand upon the grace that is on our father the grace that took him and lifted him and today is shining forth across the globe as it has worked for him may it work for me and work for you in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus I speak over someone's life by this time next year as you return here you will return 10 times better 10 times better 10 times better in the name of Jesus Christ finally let me declare for tonight over you that as you go to sleep may God open the blueprint of your destiny for you visions of your future visions of God's program 
visions that reveal the blueprint of your place in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to shout hallelujah three times. Are you ready? Number one. Number two. Number three. Every generation will not be confused. There is a generation that will get this thing. Say the compressed coffee pule capas. From that day, the creative dimension of the prophetic. There must be a performance because. 